Permelia, we match. <laughs> We're all in blues today. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. And so so we are uh we're here today to, to welcome Marie, Marie Piplo, Piplovic. Right. Great. Piplovic. Perfect. Piplovic. Okay. Uh, on the Be Well, the we Be Well Hub experience. Today we're going to be talking about breath work. And the title was Taking the Work Out of Breath Work, which is the <laughs> play on the word, which is really great. And so uh, we've got a guest with Dave Stevens, uh, David Stevens, we've got Amelia Parham there. Uh, I'm Gary Marcus Judge. And I'm going to be the host, and Marie's going to be my co-host. When I say that, it means there is no presentation or webinar. There's no teaching. It's more sharing and sharing our expertise and also our journey. That's what this is all about. This is uh, connecting and contributing. This is everyone making their little contribution to help others, you know, move forward. So that's this is my uh, my contribution. So, Marie, perhaps you'd like to just tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're coming from, a bit of your background, why you got into breath work, what kind of impact it had on you, what kind of what what can we have, you know, what can I, what can we take away from this hour spent together? Right. Well, I thank you first of all, Gary, for allowing me to to come on to this show. This is really great. I've been attending the show for for, for several uh, weeks now, and I really enjoy it. And um, I got into breath work because I had a health issue. I basically, in my midlife, I was an IT consultant for 27 years. I burned out. I really suffered from a lot of burnout, uh, not only just from the work, but from chronic stress that I didn't really have the tools or didn't you know, have, know what to do to help myself. And so I ended up burning out and I ended up in you know a bad place with my health and so as I was recovering I was also realizing that okay I need to start helping myself I need to to find ways to keep myself well and I started a search and I ended up uh running into uh breath work um conscious breathing is what I call it um and so I ended up learning about that and I realized that for me, that was something I could do on a daily basis and it fit into my lifestyle and it actually helped me to escalate my healing I'm in a really big way. So that's really how I started and I don't want to go into it too much more. But what I ended up doing is I did stay in IT for several more years, but I, I realized when COVID hit, I realized that, you know, I, it was time for me to shift and it was time for me to start sharing this wonderful technique and other self-care techniques with other working women in midlife who were suffering from the, <laughs> the pains and the struggle and the, the um, you know, trauma of, of burnout, you know, and to so, help so them. We're going to have this as like an interactive. Uh, yeah. If anyone has any questions, do feel yeah. j- jump in and ask Marie. So we keep this conversation, keep right. the fire ignited, let's say. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, Ingrid. Hi. Um, so Hi, the great. question, Marie, is to understand how did you understand it was like the breathing that was uh, having some some sort of effect on your burnout or your you know, your uh, disorder? Well, you- it changed the it ch- can change your state instantly. One of that's one of the things with um, with breathing is that it can change your state. So you actually when you start focusing on your breath, becoming aware of your breath, changing your breathing patterns, uh, you can actually go into a fight or flight response into the sympathetic response and get energized, or you can slow your breath down and you can activate the um, rest and digest. So the breath is really the only part of our autonomic nervous system that we actually can have some like control over and we can shift it. So it can help us in in many different ways. And what I wanted to start with, though, was, you know, I don't want to really get into too much about me, but I wanted to ask the question of you guys. What do you think and feel when you hear the term breathwork? I I feel calm. (laughs) Could be because I've um, been able to take part in some of Marie's breathwork, which was, was, was amazing. So, um, but it just, it, 
when I think about breathing, I think about slowing my breath down, which then, you know, slows me down. That's what I think about. Yeah. David? Well, when I was in the Air Force, I was given leadership training. And one of the courses in leadership was a course on learning how to cry. And that also leads to the breath work because what they found is during Vietnam, the nurses overcame the stresses and the trauma that they saw on a regular basis all the time. However, the men had a hard time giving that up. It stayed with them. And so this course on learning how to cry came about because they were watching the nurses and what they would do, they would be very diligent at what they were working with and the death and the dismemberments and all that kind of stuff. Really horrible things. But what they would do when they got a break, they'd go outside and they'd bawl their eyes out, screaming, crying, and everything else like that. Then they'd catch their breath. And then they go back and do more work. Wow. And so part of the course on learning how to cry as a leader is so that you can get those emotions out. Because if you carry those emotions with you, you can take those emotions and use them badly on the people that are working for you. Mm -hmm. And so that goes the same way with breathing. If you're just panting and panting and panting, you don't really pay attention to anybody else. And so the whole idea was to be able, as a leader, to be able to make sure your people are doing what they need to do and they're encouraged and they're inspired. And that takes a combination of really the breathing comes right into that. Oh, Ingrid? That's amazing. That's <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Wow. I guess, uh, yeah, for me, that is amazing. Sorry, just jump into the next. No, that's, thank you for sharing that, David. Like, wow. Um, <laughs> a couple things, I guess. Breath work, to me, sounds a little bit different than breathing. And so it makes me a little bit curious. What, is, what does that mean? And I've noticed that breathing is kind of the gateway for almost all other real self-help things or like um, just good practices like your yoga, your tai chi, your... Um, uh, goodness, meditation, all kinds of things just start with breathing and let's just get aware with ourselves, top to bottom and that whole energy flow and get in touch with, I don't know, I guess back to the start of this. So yeah, the word breath work makes me very curious. What does that mean? I know that breathing is important. I know that it's essential. I know that it it's kind of my my spark where it begins, but what is breath work? Hmm, interesting. We can work with it. And what does that mean? You know, so yeah, it makes me curious. Wonderful. And Stephen, what, uh, we, we talk about breath work. What, what, what comes to mind when you hear the word breath work? What comes to mind is being triggered. So, you know, it's a, when, we, <laughs> when, we, when we hit some level of, you know, understanding or, or peace in life, you know, we think, oh, maybe we've, we, maybe we've got life mastered. And then, then someone will come along. Usually it's in the embodiment of like a, like a little person that's, that knows what but, buttons to push. And, uh, and, and, and they just willfully do that. And then all of a sudden you catch yourself a little frustrated and it's like, it's like, why am I getting upset? You know, it's like, you know, what is this, what is this thing that's going on here? And it always comes back to my mind and I'll tell myself, breathe, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, and it's, and it's funny because it's like, you know, it's, it's little things. I'll tell you the story. My, my grandson came over and, uh, and I said, don't go out. You know, he had brand new tennis shoes on. His mom said, you know, hey, try to keep his shoes clean because we're going for pictures afterwards. And it had rained for like two weeks behind my property and it's all muddy. And the next thing I, I look around, I'm making dinner and I'm looking around. And he's like, he's not on the couch anymore. And the back door is open. And it's like, he's out in the middle of the of the, of the the mud, <laughs> you know, jumping around. And I, it's like, oh shit, you know? And so, <laughs> and so I, I have him come in. I say, and now now the food's burning, right? So, so I have him come in. <laughs> And I say, don't sit on the couch, right? Let me clean you up. And it's like, and and I go back, he's playing video games on the couch, kicking his muddy feet against the couch. And I'm going, it's like, and and, and that's when the that's when it came to me. Breathe, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. 
So it does work. It does work. And it was a very, it's a very quick shift in, in, in my, you know, in my expectations and in my interaction with him. And, uh, you know, it, it works. Wonderful. What about you, Gary? Oh, well, I've been hearing about the word breathing and breath work. And, uh, breath work, maybe no, but breathing, as Ingrid said, was like, you know, focus on your breathing. How difficult that is, really. I mean, how, you know, for, to sustain it for over a little bit of time. It's like you can stay there for a while, but after a while you're distracted, how the mind just takes you away. You can't focus for long periods on, 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 on your breath, even though... The meditation practices just say to stay with your breath because it's it's really what it's all about. If you're not breathing, then you're not here, right? And so <laughs> it's, it's part of us, and so you can't stop that. Yet, how the mind actually takes you away from breathing, which is the essential, you know, fundamental element of just life itself, it takes you away from that. So. Um, Breath work definitely is some sort of practice. I, 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 uh, I'm sure you would tell us about on how to become more focused on, uh, on, uh, on this, on this uh, strategy yeah. that can help us. Right. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. So let me um, share with you the in the International Breathwork Foundation's definition of breathwork. <clears throat> And that definition is the experiential field of study and practice that encompasses a variety of breathing techniques utilized individually and in groups to cultivate self-awareness and the enhancement of physical, emotional, cognitive, or spiritual well-being. So breathwork is the umbrella. Um, for me, I'll just share with you, to me, it sounds like work. When I hear the word work, <laughs> Since I suffered from burnout, I don't want to hear work, Matt. So to me, it's, it, it gives me, using that term breath work, makes it feel like I have another chore to complete or another task. And so for me, I choose to, to use the term conscious breathing. And the International Breathwork Foundation's definition of conscious breathing is this. Um, conscious breathing is the practice of breathing with awareness, intention, and attention to the inner experience in the present moment. And so for me, that's the term I use most of the time. I, I very rarely use the term breath work because I know it's the umbrella. And breath work encompasses all the breathing you see in yoga, in martial arts, in performance uh, uh performance folks that, you know, help the football players you know, do better, better plays, uh, the, the um, military, the breath work is in all, everything nowadays. I mean, it really is. It's, and it has been for a long time. It's not that it hasn't been there. It just hasn't been noticed. And so um, for me, that term conscious breathing invites me to notice my breath without judging it, without worrying about it, without needing to work at it. And so I like that. So how now how do you feel about breath work? <laughs> well, that, I love that, defi that definition, Marie, because it feels lighter, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. feel like it's work. <laughs> <laughs> The other there's definition is, water. you know, there's a lot of words in that definition about what breath work is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was just looking at the, 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 the word breath work and conscious breathing, uh, reflecting on it from a, from a point of view as, as coaches as well, as working with this technique. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as I've got a background as like business coaching and executive coaching, I come from that direction. Um, I think if you were to take breath work as, um, as a proposal in companies, or it seems like something that would be accepted breath work, whereas conscious breathing would not be accepted in the commercial uh, mm -hmm. arena. Uh, what, what, what's your thoughts on that, Marie? Well, that kind of makes sense. I think that, 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 you know, probably in the corporate world, they would love to hear that term in the people that I work with though, that have burned out from that world, that term can be somewhat of a trigger. So I think it really just depends on the audience. 
which term and you use both i mean it, it, because really con they're different the the breath work is the you know the umbrella it's that that container and the conscious breathing is just really part of that so um that's mm -hmm. how i think i think both of them are are useful and depending on the situation one might go over better than the other <laughs> Yeah. Anybody else? So, uh, I, I I kind of dumped a bunch of stuff in the uh, in the chat, and what I find interesting is you know breath work is, you know, it's got a deep tradition in a lot of different you know rituals and belief systems, and it always brings me back to the the that old, old meme about the four thousand years of medicine. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's like two thousand BC here, eat this root. One thousand AD, oh that root's heathen. Say this prayer. Uh, <laughs> 1685, that prayer is superstitious, drink this potion. You know, 1935, that potion snake oil, here, swallow this pill. 1975, you know, that pill's ineffective, here, take this antibiotic. 2020, yep. that antibiotic is poison, here, take this root. You know, so it all <laughs> goes back full circle. And I'm wondering how much, you know, how much of truth exists with, you know, within what was known before. And, and based on that rich history, breath work definitely works, right? And now the question is, what are we achieving with it? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, conscious breathing focuses on awareness and curiosity and exploration, noticing how we feel. So when we speed up the inhale, we activate that sympathetic fight or flight response so we can become more energized. We can want to take action. When we slow and lengthen the exhale, we can turn on our parasympathetic rest and digest response and begin to relax and rejuvenate. So we actually can consciously change how we feel. So here's another question. Have you ever experienced how a small change, just a tiny little change in your breathing can help you navigate through challenging moments? Um, I can give you, we were talking about tennis before. Okay. Uh, and when I'm on the tennis court, there's this um, tendency when you're playing a, a long rally or an important point to actually go into some sort of uh, apnea. I think it's called apnea in Italian. Anyway, it's uh, when you stop, you stop breathing. You hold your breath to get through that because you're afraid of actually making mistakes or actually, but it's the opposite. It's like everyone, the, the, the instructors tell you to breathe through that because you, you oh. when you when you're so tight and you're just worried about not making any mistakes you stop breathing and that's the worst thing that, that can, you can do but you do it naturally so i don't the question my question would be back to you is uh, what happens there why do i just uh, hold my breath against the well-being of uh, myself but also of the result that i'm trying to obtain well, the answer I'd give you is that that's, that's a natural fight or flight response. That's survival. That's going back to our primal brain, to our, to, to back in, in, in our unconscious mind. When we, when something was coming at us, we don't know the difference between a tennis ball and a tiger. <laughs> we go into fight or flight. So it's really just that survival brain. It's a subconscious thought. So it's natural. So that's why by consciously shifting that we are retraining our brain to uh, be less reactive and more um, responsive anybody else want to so then in? to kind of expand on that i guess gary you mentioned that the coach is like breathe through that and so the yeah. coach is kind of thinking if you can keep your breath going smooth then you've got more control over your mind which means you're going to have clearer shots which means you actually have more control over your game and the ball than holding your breath like your instincts is saying <gasps> that's what we need to do yeah hmm, interesting yeah yeah, yeah. And obviously, each shot gets more and more difficult as you hold your breath, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so you, you haven't got that flow. You're becoming tighter and rigid with every action. In the end, it's like after that rally of 5 or 10, 15 shots, you're so drained as well. But you haven't been breathing. So you haven't been actually, you know, 
yeah. refill, refilling your your lungs or whatever. And so yeah, it takes it all out of you. It takes that. Uh, yeah, and then often performance coaches will teach folks different breathing techniques, ways to use that breath hold in order to actually benefit and help you do better at that game. So there's breath conscious breathing techniques for for that as well. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine that's in public speaking too, when you go on, on stage and you've got to yeah. talk about the, the crowd and you, get, you, you can't get your breathing technique right. And <laughs> you're either going too fast or you're going too slow. And uh, the words are coming out. You maybe you know you're speaking too long, and you ha you haven't taken a breath. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So so really, um, David or Stephen, do you have any thoughts on that, or any experiences? Oh well, yeah. If you want to go from the business standpoint of things, you know, oh, you're absolutely. Doing, you're doing seminars and uh, webinars and stuff like that. You know, I have a tendency of speaking too long. And so I had to be very careful that when I'm trying to get a point across on something, I do uh, consulting on servant leadership. And so when I want to get a point across, I've got to make sure I've got my breath where it comes out good and not exasperated, <laughs> you know? So I've got to make sure I have my breathing going down right between sections. Mm -hmm. that makes sense absolutely but media are you breathing oh yes <laughs> <laughs> you know yes. i've used some of marie's techniques um often time well not often but every now and again when i you know wake up in the middle of the night and i've got all these thoughts going on in my head um I'll just, um, I, I do lay there and put my hands on my chest and I'll do the box breathing. So I'll, I'll, you know, breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four and hold for four. And I find that calms me down enough. It gets, gets me out of my head uh, so that I can go back to sleep. So I use, I use that technique fairly often. Perhaps Marie can sh maybe take us through one of these techniques uh, in, in later on. Yeah, I'll do that soon. Yeah, yeah. Because you talk about the box technique. Is that right? But maybe yeah, she's or talking about the box breath, which is actually used by emergency responders. And these aren't my techniques. These are techniques that have been around for many, many, many years. But emergency responders use the box breath often because it's a really fast way to get get folks into a relaxed state and still keep them focused so i find it, it i love that one too because you can kind of picture it too like how it was mentioned mm -hmm. earlier that it can be hard mm -hmm. to stay focused on the breath this helps a little because you picture the little box going around <laughs> yeah 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 i'm like that too ingrid i'm very visual so as i'm you know laying there in the middle of the night with my eyes closed <laughs> Yeah, your just eyes are going in a focus. box. Yeah, <laughs> just being able to focus on the breathing and on the fact that it's moving in a box-like manner um, or a square manner, then um, that helps me calm myself down enough to fall back to sleep. Ah, good. Yeah. David was talking before about crying, David. You were saying about um, learning how to cry. You mentioned that before, right? Yes. Right. What well, what was the breathing there? What, did they give you a specific breathing technique, or was it just uh, breathing? I don't know. They really didn't give us a technique so much. It was more of once the we call it wax women air corps back then. Now now the you know, women pilots and everything like that too, but women in general do a lot better job of releasing their emotions than men do. And so what they would do is they would just have an enormous ball, just B-A-W-L, just frustration, everything coming out and everything like that, just cry their hearts out. And when they were done there, then they relax a little ah. bit. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. they 
start feeling better and you know they might have another session but then again they might feel good enough just go right on back and go through the same old crap again and so it worked out great and as far as in leadership here again which is what the training was for is not only did you have to learn that but you had to learn when to cry mm. you know because as a leader they don't necessarily want to see you cry but sometimes they need to see you cry mm. and so you have to determine what those things are because the whole whole deal to that from a military standpoint is to spot inspire the people below you so they want to keep going because if they get to the point to where they give up, they're going to get shot. Right. Right. And so that's what the whole thing is, is to try to inspire other people. And you had to get those uh, feelings and those responses out of you in order for you to be able to go ahead and uh, still be the leader that they're expecting you to be. Mm -hmm. That's what that was all about, Gary. Great, thanks, David. Thanks. Yeah, I was just thinking about the different types of uh, breathing. We're talking about the relaxing breathing. We're talking about the energetic breathing. We're talking about the box breathing. So I, I suppose there are many different techniques of breathing, or not, Marie? Oh yeah, there's many, many, many. <laughs> so um, and really, changing state is really important. Um, conscious breathing allows us to let go of that emotional discomfort. That's that the crying that will come up sometimes when you're breathing because it lightens that you, your body and your uh, senses enough to where that can come through. And then it gives you space to, to either energize, focus, cultivate a positive mood state or relax or whatever needs to happen. There's techniques that there's a technique for almost everything. And so let's just start right now. Close your eyes for a minute. And just relax for a minute if you can with your feet flat on the floor. And then inhale to your count of four. So inhale, two, three, four, whatever your count of four is. And then on your exhale, extend your exhale so it's longer than your count of four. Make it a five, six, seven, eight would be great. And repeat that inhale to a count of four and exhale, extending it out for a few more times. Counting your breath keeps your focus on your breath. And then if you can extend it even longer, go a little longer on your exhale. Inhale to a count of four. Exhale for however long you can go with ease. You want it to be relaxed. Okay, go ahead and bring yourself back to your normal breathing. Open your eyes. Notice how you feel and let me know. What did you what did you notice in that just that short practice? Oh, there's my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> go, go on, Stephen, you had your hand up. What are you gonna say? What I was going to say is it's um, there's a there's a physiology or a feeling that that you experience before you enter into a trance like state and and that's what I noticed that was being engaged by you know by the longer drawn out breaths and the in the conscious breathing. Beautiful. It didn't happen this time, this particular time, but I've done breathing with Marie quite a bit, and and I yawn a lot. So my my eyes will tear 
and I'll yawn. It's just, it's like I have to I keep I need to keep yawning and yawning and yawning <laughs> until there's a certain state, and then you know, um, and then my yawning. What's that all about? Like, what's well, all about yawning, yawning? Is yawning is a natural? They're still studying yawning, but yawning is a natural. What they found is that it's a very natural response to get more air, to get more breath. And because we're going throughout our days being in fight or flight response more than rest or digest, the yawn forces us to mm. breathe. And so it's natural. So when you start to focus on your breath, when you're yawning, we breath, conscious breathing facilitators like that. That's a good thing. That means you're, you're relaxing, you're bringing mm. in more breath. Does that help if you listen to yawny music? Uh, yeah, I like <laughs> yawny. <laughs> Uh, I've got a wax. <laughs> uh, Ronnie's really good. I have a few playlists with him. <laughs> I like Yanni. Uh, I found it sure didn't take long. What was yours? Uh, I was able to just kind of whoa right out real quick and just connect with with the breath really fast. That was awesome. Uh, I yeah. Yeah, I, maybe it's come with practice too, because I can remember back a year or two ago when I first started learning about breathing and it was not quite the same way that I could just dive into it so quickly. But I have always had a very um, strong ability to fall asleep as well. Uh, like I can relax quite easily and maybe I've always been able to put myself into kind of a meditative state and fall asleep. But yeah, it can happen pretty quick and almost anywhere, any time of day. <laughs> the kids laugh at me. They look over at the doctor's office and mom, we're just, it's our turn. <laughs> so, <laughs> we should have read the book. <laughs> well, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, David. David's going to share his pillow. <laughs> That reminds me of uh, Wayne Dyer would say that you could always meditate even at a stoplight. He said that if if you you know if the light turns green and you don't notice, he goes, people will let you know. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you, so you, had your, you had your kids there for you, so perfect. You could it it gives every anytime you have your kids, you have that perfect permission to to drop off because you've got people let, there to let you know. That's right, Stephen. I've got their back when it needs to be, and sometimes they need to have my back. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing is the sigh now it is the sigh's gotten a bad rap but that's actually a, a breathing technique and it's gotten a bad rap that if somebody sighs they're bored or whatever well it's not true the sigh again is another way for the the body's getting what it needs it's bringing in the the breath and so um as Breath workers, we encourage people to purposely sigh, to purposely yawn. You can do both, but the sigh is the easiest. And you, to do that, you just inhale twice as big as your natural inhale. And then fully let go with a long, slow sigh. With You can do it with sound. Of course, you can exaggerate it. Ah. <sighs> Or if you're in a meeting and you don't want anybody to know that, oh my God, whatever just that person just said over there triggered me and I'm I'm getting a little stressed over that, you can actually sigh without sound. And it, try that. Do that now. Take a couple sighs and then again, notice how you feel. It's the simplest technique to come back to balance. Well, you can feel it in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then try doing it without, you know, in a way that is not real obvious. Notice that it still has the same effect as if you do a, a real, you know, dramatic sigh. So for people that are in meetings or in a work situation or leaders that are really getting triggered, but they're not sure, you know, they can't take that sigh they can't walk out of the room they can do that internal sigh what do you think about that how does that feel well, I, I i feel it in my head to be honest uh, if it feels like it clears my brain out a little bit yeah it helps calm, yeah it helps calm me down 
by being able to do that longer out breath with the sigh. I like that. Yeah, I almost catch like a whoosh mm -hmm. that comes out and it, yeah, just kind of smooth and leaves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's when we, 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 we have a deep sigh and if it's really obvious that we're doing it from someone, they think that we're, oh, I'm frustrated or not again or something right. like this, like, you know, so yeah, that the, the ability to, to do this, the, the sigh in, in a way that's not so obvious would be, would be helpful in meetings, especially, or with people who are frustrating you and you just breathe inwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a really good point. Cause if you're in a meeting, let's say if you're, have a group of people that you're trying to uh, work with on a project or something like that. If you can sigh, that gets you from being too hyper and brings you back down so that you can have a better conversation. I can think back to my IT days, you know, during some stressful times when I didn't know these techniques. <laughs> And I instantly would go into reaction mode, right? Because I didn't have the tools at the time. Whereas now, you know, I don't have to instantly go. Sometimes I do, but I'm more apt to stop and take a sigh first. So it it does help to put you in a more responsive mode when we bring the, the conscious breathing into our daily life and we practice it once in a while and it doesn't take long to have an effect that's the thing it, it could be one or two breaths can bring you back to a state where you're clear you're focused you're not as triggered yeah. i think as a leader trying to implement breath work in a meeting i think you need to have a complete trust of your team and um and moments when you've got to make a big decision or is it, you've got to pivot to some new direction is actually telling everyone, just sit down, just just, just take two seconds, just, just breathe a little bit, a bit of silence. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, um, but leaders have to have complete trust in their team to be able to do that. Otherwise, right. they're, not, they're not credible. They're not accepted. Yeah. But that would be amazing, I think. Well, a thought came up, Gary, when you were saying that is that, um, you know, often... This is something I'm finding with, with my study in hypnotherapy and, and the way that we are sympathetic with one another. So when we're in a space, what I find with hypnotherapy, we can enter a trance when we're when we're at our most secure space. And so the 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 absolute role of the hypnotherapist is 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 no more than to create a space of of perceived peace and safety in which the client can then in effect unlock their own their own cure, their own secrets, right? So it, it, it's it's creating that space where they can go in and, and, and evaluate some of these past memories or past beliefs in a, in, a, in a place of absolute control and power of their own making, right? So that they're not in a place of fear or fear response. So in effect, their, their consciousness comes in. And when you were mentioning that, I don't know that the leader even has to say anything to the team. If the leader is in the space of peace and, and control, right? So something happens, you're triggered. If you can self-regulate, if you can come back to this place of emotional regulation, of 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 just embodying this this concept of peace, no matter what chaos is going on around you, then it's going to actually create this ability for the people around you, your team, to follow suit. Because you know, if you are agitated, they will tend to be agitated. If you're if you if you drop back into this place of okay, well, let's just take a breath, or you don't you know you could say that but they may may follow you or not. Um, <laughs> But it's this idea that I think if you embody that, it, it, that's really all that matters. And then whether they join you or not, it's, this is the same thing that's true with, with the coaching, with the hypnotherapy. Unless somebody's willing to, you can't force anybody to do anything. You can't make them, you, you can invite them, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it's whether they're willing to join you or not. So it's, my, my point is, is if you if you try to tell your team to breathe they may they may just reject it as as yeah. as meaningless but if you embody that and, and then and they will unconsciously start mimicking your practices even when even when they don't realize it that's the same thing true for parenting all of that 
if we model it, we have better transition of that concept than if we ever talk about it, right? So that that was all I had that came up on that. That's really good. Um, and that brings in the fact that even hypnotherapy, they're using conscious breathing in hypnotherapy. Conscious breathing is everywhere. Breath, you know, that it, it's not anything new. And again, like all of the traditions that are in the chat, you know, it it also does. There's some techniques that can take you really deep and really into trans states. I do share that one in our sessions, but those are real intense sessions. You you can't go back to work after one of those and really be clear. So, um, th but that again is is like what Stephen says. It's allowing the breath to actually activate your own inner healer, and everybody's different. So the and everybody's breathing pattern is different, and so we can't really tell somebody what to do. And that's why I've gotten to where I might say your count of four instead of me trying to to guide everybody to the same count of four. Well, what if your count of four is a little longer than mine, right? So I, everybody, I want to allow everybody and to offer to everybody that everybody has their own breathing pattern and they actually know what makes them feel better and what doesn't. They just have been told by other people well, that's wrong, or, you know, you do it my way or do it. So I really want to encourage people to be empowered to tune into their own breath and find their, their own healing capacity, their own place where they can go into that trance state, where they can, they can find that spirituality within, or they can work on their goals and focus in a way that helps, that the breath can help them be real clear about. So a question, Marie, about the in-breath and the out-breath. We, we did the exercise before where count to four with the in-breath and count to eight or 12 or more on the out-breath. So uh, is it, are we looking like an active breathing, passive breathing? Why, why, why is that so long rather than the in-breath being so short? The reason I did that is I wanted to put you into relax the rest and digest. I wanted to activate your parasympathetic. So um, I wanted you to slow down your breath on, and it's easier to do that on the exhale. You could even like take an inhale and hum. And when you hum, you'll notice you can just exhale forever almost. That's going to help you relax. Now, if we wanted to get you energized, you would focus on the inhale and you might do a longer, take a real full inhale and a shorter exhale. So depending on how you uh, use your breath with your inhales and exhales, you can either rest or you can energize. Mm -hmm. And then there's a balanced breath where you, you, and that's the one that we technically breathing through our nose all day and having a balanced breath would be great. That's, a, you know, an ideal breath. That's, a, that's an interesting point as well. Breathing through your nose or through your mouth. Is there a difference? There is. Yeah. Well, obviously the mouth is a lot bigger, so you get a lot more <laughs> intensity and a lot more volume. And there's definitely there's techniques that are purposely using mouth breathing for that activation, that energy activation that there, it's bringing you into that um, uh, fight flight mode um, on purpose to help you uh, develop more resilience. So there's a lot of techniques like in uh, performance and even I, I believe in some of the, the military schools might use that as well. They also do use the box breath and some of the other ones to maintain calm and focus as well. So yeah, so mouth breathing is going to bring more intensity. It's going to activate faster. Whereas nose breathing, obviously the nose is meant to breathe through. It ha it's going to clear out all the gunk that comes in and out of our bodies. Uh, and it's going to be softer, a gentler breath, a more even breath. So and it's, it's going mm -hmm. to be easier to get to a relaxed state when you're not constantly breathing in and out through your mouth. And I don't know if any of you have, there's this breath book, Breath and um James Nestor talks a lot about that in his book. So, so when, when you're playing sports, it's a bit difficult to breathe through the you should 
I mean, if I've understood correctly, breathing through your nose, you have more control, more focus, you clear your mind, you clear your, you have more control, let's say. However, when you're running around and you're, and you're expending uh, energy, it's not enough to breathe through your nose. You need to breathe through your mouth. And we do that automatically, but if you read this book, you'll find that there's training some of the uh, athletes to breathe more through their nose, through their, like runners, actually improves their performance. So, you know, there's there's techniques, I mean, I, for almost anything. <laughs> and then, of course, there's techniques for getting into the spiritual state, you know, the trans state. But, and of course, breathing in and out through your nose. I generally, if I don't want to have people, like, like if you're breathing in and out through your mouth, you ha are going to have a tendency to, especially before some sort of exercise or whatever, you could um, go into hyperventilation more so than if you're breathing in and out through your nose. So hyperventilation happens more with breath, breathing through the mouth, uh, so like Wim Hof is another one. He does a lot of that, but he doesn't mm. suggest you, you breathe that way <laughs> before you go into a swimming pool or something, you know? So, you know, there's reasons to do both. There's reasons to, to, to breathe in and out through your mouth, reasons to breathe in and out through your nose. Uh, typically the, nose is made for breathing so a lot of what i'm reading now and a lot of what james nestor talks about is that in general breathing in and out through our nose throughout the day is probably the best <laughs> flying is the same thing because you know uh, you take uh, air aircraft uh, jet pilots and everything like that and there's certain things that you do and everything like that that has a lot of draining on your system and so the mask that you wear is designed for your nose to breathe out of most more so than your mouth, because if you breathe through your mouth, you get a leak and you can't have that. Yeah. And so you learn how to do it through your nose. Yeah. Same with scuba diving as well, right? Yeah. Uh, no. Except you're getting water. <laughs> <laughs> I know I took some scuba diving lessons once and they actually showed us how to clear our masks underwater, which was pretty, pretty interesting. But um, yes, the whole concept of making sure that you're, you're breathing, you're getting your air, but not, not, uh, not, not what you don't want. <laughs> and scuba diving is a, a wonderful example. I'm a scuba diver too. And uh, that was when I, I guess I didn't realize that I was learning how to breathe in, in my scuba diving but again that's one where you breathe in slowly you don't <laughs> hyperventilate you slow mm. breaths equal breaths constant you in and out you don't pause you don't hold your breath you hold your breath you could get yourself into some problems so it's just a very fluid in and out now of course you're breathing through your mouth but still it's slow and it's steady and, yeah, especially coming up. Yeah, and I had an experience where I, I had nitrogen narcosis at depth, and I sort of went crazy. And I was at the deep hole in Belize, and the dive master noticed that I was going a little bit panicky, and I was going to surface. And you know, we were down very deep, 135 or something like that, and I was going to just pop. I was just going to go. I was scared. I panicked. I couldn't read my gauge. And he um, instantly could see. I mean, these are, the, I learned how to breathe from this, this person. He was amazing. He saw me, he grabbed my hand to make sure he, I would stay down and I wouldn't. And he, he looked at me and, and instantly he, he pointed here and he followed my breath. I knew exactly what he meant. Follow my breath. Because I was, I was, you know, I was breathing in and out, but he could tell that I was breathing too fast. Follow my breath. So he slowed my breath down. And then I looked at, finally could see my gauge and it looked like I was running out of air. And he like went, 
like, don't worry about it. He would not let go of me, though. He did not let go of me until we got to the surface because he wow. knew that if he did, I would potentially, um, you know, I had the worst headache. It was like the worst hangover <laughs> you could have um, after that. And I almost didn't go down the next dive, but I, I figured I should go on another short dive, shallow dive. Otherwise, I probably would never dive again. So I did. But it was, yeah. But that dive master, he knew. And it was about the breath, slowing the breath down. So that was quite powerful. I didn't think of it, though, until after I started my breath work. And I started thinking, wow, I was learning breath work even then. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, a, there's an interesting technique as well of, um, is it fire breathing is it called in Kundalini yoga? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. to bring up the energy in, in you know, right. that's quite powerful as well. It's like uh, very short breaths, like through the nose and, you know, with your hand on your stomach and that brings in the energy and the heat and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so how can we encourage ourselves to prioritize self-care by incorporating this like mindful breathing into our busy lives? Any thoughts? Some of the Ingrid first. Okay, no, thanks, you. Now you're seen. <laughs> um, I find it's helpful to remind myself it's not that hard. Ing, stop. Take a breath. It's going to do so much more than biting myself on it and just continuing with the flusters or whatnot. And that's a per been a good start for me anyways. Is it's not hard. Excellent. Just start. Just just yeah. breathe. And let's yeah. take a minute. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, give yourself, a, you know, give yourself a pat on the back, you know, mm -hmm. and don't be so hard on ourselves, right? If yeah, we don't get that, it right. You're right, Marie. And that's actually the other part of it is uh, to remember to say, good job. Thank you for taking that moment and yeah. stopping the chaos that was happening there or the whatever. And yeah, and believing in there is another way and taking it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, the expression, look after yourself. Yeah. Look after yourself. That's just, uh, it, it, we say that. But I mean, it's you looking after yourself because no one else is going to look after you. So it's, so it's such a simple sentence that we say, but we never really reflect on it. You know, I said, you know, I say to my daughter, my, 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 my oldest daughter lives in London now. I said, take care of yourself. It's like two people there, one taking care of the other. And so I think when you do that, then all these practices are really good because you're taking care of yourself. Yep. Stephen, you were saying you had your hand up. You were going to. Oh, what, what I was going to say is, you know, I think you know, conscious breath work is like the gateway to realize the, the, the amazing influence we have over our own biology, right? We have all of these automatic programs that are running and a lot of them are, are based off of this, you know, fight, flight, freeze. And like even the, the simple program of, of our calorie intake, right? We've got this program that says, take as many calories that you can possibly take in with the least amount of effort. And this program is, is hardwired into our biology but it's killing us, right? How many people are having diabetes and, and obesity and all of these heart-related um, problems and everything else? And it's a simple program that's, that's there to design to keep us alive. But once we realize that by, by doing simple things like controlling our breath, we can recognize the, the immense governing control that we have over these automatic programs, and over time, I think that we can realize the influence that we can have on these. This is the reason that I got into hypnotherapy was the multiple reasons. But the, the thing that proved to me that hypnotherapy was real is I had a session with a, with a client. She, had, she was in a wheelchair and she was sensitive to, to her internal physiology because, you know, when you lose the, the external um, touch, other things develop. It's like when a person is blind, their sense of hearing gets better. So she could tell things internally what were what was going on, even though she didn't have the external sensory. She could feel deep touch, but not light touch. But when we were doing the hypnotherapy, her blood pressure changed. And when I realized that that even by entering into a place of suggestibility, where where the simple concept of imagining a fluid entering into your body and 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 then exiting, um, if that you know if the person 
has more fluid coming in, their 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 blood pressure can elevate. And we don't think that blood pressure is something that's under our control, but it is. Mm-hmm. And and it was it it was exemplified by that experience. And when I realized the power that exists within suggestion, you know, I became very very delicate in the way that I that I offer suggestion because you don't want to offer somebody a suggestion that's not going to be helpful. And and it's this idea of what is their suggestion? What what suggestion are they telling themselves? So that's what I wanted to share is that we don't realize how much power we have over our, our human experience. And, and by consciously practicing breath work, we can open up that gateway and get better at it because we get better with practice. So that, that was the idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks. Thanks yeah. We're coming, we're coming to the end and I don't want people jumping off. So let me say goodbye to everyone before the others do that. There's these black spots after a while because people have just disappeared. So thank you, Marie. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's been a great hour spent together. Hopefully we're all taking some techniques away and we're going to breathe and sigh and uh, maybe go a little bit d- deeper into the subject as well. So thank you very much, David, yeah. Stephen, Ingrid, Pamela. Uh, what, are you, what are you guys taking away? Is that we've got, a, we got a, um, three or four minutes to, uh, or centers. David, what are you taking away from this hour spent together? Well, uh, I mentioned I do servant leadership consulting webinars, so I, I have a lot of people around the globe. So my sleep patterns are really messed up most of the time. And so if I don't get good sleep because I'm not breathing well, I, I'm miserable all day. What I found that helps me breathe well is... Um, Tibetan bowl music. Mm, right you know on. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And also Native American flute music. Both of those mm-hmm. get me to where I can start breathing better. And I can take a three hour nap and feel more aware than if I tried to sleep and force myself to sleep mm-hmm. for eight hours. Yep. There's a huge difference. Ingrid, what's your takeaway? Um, I've learned that breathing has really helped me calm down. So now I uh, I need to take the other side of it. I love that pre- uh, Marie mentioned that today, that breathing, in the, the uh, lengthening the inhale helps to increase the energy as well as the mouth. So I want to try to find some breathing exercises that increase energy and see if I can bring those into application when I'm kind of feeling, uh, I don't want to do that. Oh, let's just take a breath thing. And yes, let's do it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I mean, even we've said, we mentioned before the Kundalini yoga, breath, yeah. fire, fire breathing. That's quite good. Yeah. But Amelia, Amelia. <laughs> well, you know, uh, conscious breathing is a practice just like so many other things. So I just try to uh, remember to practice and, um, very fortunate i'm part of a group that marie's part of and so we get to breathe we do a we meet um every wednesday uh evening and so the first wednesday of the month we always get marie to do a breathing <laughs> exercise with us so brilliant brilliant yeah marie thank you again thanks for all the, your time and your expertise next week and the be well i'm gonna we're gonna have um a person called Le- leonard caponegro and he's going to be talking about, from a business point of view, the financial health of a company. How would you right look on. after the financial health of a company? As the Be Well is the business and entrepreneurial well-being, we look at aspects from the business, but also from the mental well-being. So next week, the talk is going to be about business. So if you're free, come along. Right on. Okay. Could, I, could I share one more thought before we leave? Yeah. So if we believe that the quality of our breath reflects the quality of our life, So think about whether you believe that or not. And if you do, perhaps you could give yourself a moment every day or two to focus on your breath. Just notice the qualities, the speed, the movement. And just play with it. And of course, notice how you feel. Yeah, great. Okay. Thanks. okay, so listen, look after yourselves again. Take care of yourself, look after yourselves, okay. and hopefully I'll see you next week. Okay, okay. have a great day. Thanks, Thank Gary. you so much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.
Thank you, Gary. I've just stopped the.